Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a rack for curing firearms coatings on knife parts. So if you're not familiar with uh, firearms coatings, uh, there are a whole variety of them, Duracoat, Cerakote, uh, a bunch of others. They're sort of analogous to paint, but they're not paint. They're coatings that go on to metal parts in particular, but you can put them on other things, uh, that have very high resistance to chemicals and heat and um, abrasion and all kinds of other stuff. Really neat ways of kind of spiffing up a knife. You can use them to rust proof uh, a blade or you can put them on the handles of folding knives. I mean they're just innumerable uses for them in the knife making world. So I've been using firearms coatings for years but not in really big quantities but recently in my Tactics Armory uh, folder line which I'm getting ready to, to start producing I just needed a much more efficient and sensible way of racking up my parts to put them in the curing oven. The process that you go through with firearms parts is to uh, apply them with a spray gun and then you have to cure them in an oven for a while. And uh, so I, I had a kind of jury rig rack that I was using and it just wasn't very efficient. So I wanted to really sit down and think this thing through so that I had something that I could put plenty of parts on in an efficient way. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be showing today. All right, let's jump right on into it. I'm doing it on my Tormach CNC machine, but you could just as easily do something like this with a hacksaw, a file, and a hand drill. It's not machine dependent at all. The goal here is to make a little rack for putting knife parts into a small oven in order to cure them after applying a firearms finish. Now this actually might be a useful project for somebody who does firearms coating for actual firearms parts or even for something else. But obviously we're specifically looking at a knife making operation. So the first thing about this rack is that it has to be able to withstand heat up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So my go-to rack material of PVC plumbing pipe just won't hack it. So the parts will be all aluminum. Now I wanted it to be flexible, efficient, and to fit perfectly into the oven that I use for curing the parts. I don't want it too small, but obviously it can't bang into anything either. Now I finish all kinds of different parts handles, pivot pins, screws, blades, pocket clips, all kinds of stuff. So it needs to be able to accommodate all these different sizes and shapes of parts. I wanted the handles built into the frame so it's easy to load and unload. One really crucial thing is that the parts can't bang together when you load them. If they do, they'll stick to each other or mess up the finish and you have to start all over. So I wanted to be able to rack these things up in a bunch of different ways so that there'd be no danger of ruining the parts by whacking them or jostling into each other. So what I came up with was the design I'm showing here. Now typically I hang the parts on lengths of thin metal rod. So the way it's designed, I can run parts down the length of the rack or side to side. I wanted to be able to load in little trays and painting fixtures, which is what I use for finishing screw heads, pivots, and other kinds of little dinky parts. So let's make it. I begin by screwing pieces of 1 8 inch 6061 T6 aluminum to a fixture plate on my Tormox Pearson pallet system. It's got quarter 20 screw holes at 1 inch intervals, so I can just screw all kinds of stuff to this particular plate. Now I started out by drilling the holes that will be used to screw the rack and the parts together, in the wrong place of course. So then I had to reset it and do it the right way. Then I drill quarter inch clearance holes for the screws that will be used to hold everything together. That's followed by an adaptive clearing strategy which mills out a little cutout at the top and then clears some of the excess material from the blank. The only reason for that little cutout is that there's a piece that projects into the top of the oven and I just want to make sure that it doesn't bang into that. 
I've left the protective plastic on here, which makes it look like the cuts are kind of messy, but they're not. It's just this uh, protective coating. Now there's an exterior contour that brings it to its final shape. Then it contours out the handle holes, which are held on by tabs so that the whole thing won't fly off in the middle of the operation. And that's it. Like I said, you could do all this with a hacksaw if you wanted to. Next, I'll turn to the racking rails. I'll face them on the lathe, then drill number seven holes, which will be tapped for quarter 20 screws. Again, you can just do this with a hand drill, but I have a lathe, so why not do it this way? I seem to have overfilled my little bucket of tapping fluid, so I'm giving new meaning to the phrase, apply tapping fluid liberally. Flip them around and repeat the same operation. Now I'll tap the holes. This is a handy way of tapping holes in weird sizes and shapes of material. You could do it on the lathe if you wanted to. You could do it on a drill press. But I like doing it this way. You can set the clutch on the chuck so that it doesn't overpower the tap. And as a result, there's almost no danger of breaking the tap. Now I'll set up this little indexing stop on my mill and then trim all four rods to the exact same length using a quarter inch end mill. Honestly, a lot of this stuff is kind of gilding the lily. It wouldn't kill me if these rods were chopped off with a hacksaw and ended up having slightly different lengths. But everything will fit together neater and cleaner if I do it this way. I'll also mill little slots in the top two rails so that if I hang rods from rail to rail, they won't slip or slide or roll around, which again, I really want to avoid because it can cause parts to whack into each other and then daddy's saying bad words. Now I grab some quarter 20 cap head screws and bang the whole thing together. I wasn't sure if it would be steady enough which is why I designed the three holes at the bottom. I was leaving room for the possibility of putting in a piece of flat stock to keep the thing from twisting. But no worries, this thing is solid as a rock. If not really in focus. So here's kind of the general idea of how I might be using it. Obviously these parts aren't finished yet. In fact, they haven't even been polished off and all that kind of thing. But you get the idea. Fun little project. Only took me about an afternoon to do. And since I've done some racks before that I didn't really like, I kind of knew what I was looking for. And I think this is going to put in good service for me for a long time. So one little general point that I like to make on projects like this is a certain proportion of people who watch my videos seem to get wrapped around the wheels of the kind of tools that I use. Oh, I don't have that kind of tool. I don't have a CNC machine or a mill or whatever. You know, most of the things that I make, and this includes this little rack that I made today, could be made with a hacksaw and a file and a drill press. I mean, it's just, it's not super complicated stuff. I just happen to have particular tools that, uh, you know, that make it possible for me to do it sometimes a little faster or maybe in a way that's a little bit more precise. But really, don't be scared off by the fact that uh, some of these projects use fairly complicated tools. You know, the most important thing that I'm trying to emphasize with a video like this is 
that there are a lot of tools that you can make for yourself that help you kind of clarify how to do your uh, work better and to understand what you're doing better, organize it better, and at the end of the day, produce a better knife. And that's what it's all about. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!